Sex and Advanced Mathematics, Lesson 37. Welcome to Week 11. This is not our only topic today, but we're going to start out with a review of the distance formula. Remember what it looks like. It looks rather forbearing. It's a somewhat confusing formula because we can put the x's first or the y's first, right? We can switch this order around because we're adding and adding doesn't matter. We can make, we're gonna have two pairs of points to fill in these x's and y's. We can put either, we can call either one the ones or the twos, it doesn't matter. Um, this is the form that I like best because it's familiar. Remember that this is based on the Pythagorean theorem. Um, I don't want to go too far into the theory of that, but let's just do one problem to remind ourselves of how this works, and then we will put it into practice in another type of problem. 37.1. It says, write an expression for the distance between 4, 2, and x, y. Now, what John is saying is, use the distance formula. You won't be able to come up with a number because I've got x's and y's, but use the distance formula to come up with an equation that would find the distance for this. And I know this exact problem came up. I don't think it was in this class. I think it was in another class, but I was saying, let's say that you had your neighborhood on a grid and your house was located on the, on the grid at position four, two, right? Four and two, and that was where your house was, and the rest of the neighborhood was all over. And let's say that you were trying to find the distance from your house to a bunch of different places in your neighborhood. Your friend's house, the mailbox, um, the store where you buy candy, which is a vital part of every neighborhood, uh, your closest neighbor that you trust, the neighbor where you mow the lawn, you know, different places around the neighborhood. And so you wanted to be able to calculate those distances and not start over every time. So this would work out really well because you could set up a formula using your house plus whatever other place you chose and you could plug in different places here by putting the X and Y coordinates of those locations and calculate all those distances. Wouldn't that be fun? So what we do is we simply say, okay, let's call these the ones, that'll be x1, y1, and we'll call these the twos, x2, y2, and we'll simply set it up like this. And we know we're not gonna get a number, so we don't really have to worry about buckets pouring anything in, but we'll say, okay, this will be y2 is y minus two, the minus is in the formula, right, squared, plus x minus four squared. And that would be the formula that you could use to calculate the distance from your house at position four two to every other house in the neighborhood. This is example 37.1. This is just reminding you of how the distance formula works. Now we're gonna put that into play. There is a term called locus definition. And we're gonna talk about locus definitions of different shapes, um, circles and such. But we're starting with a line. We're starting today with a line. And this is just the way that some mathematicians see the world. You know how, like if you're doing mental math with another person, they may have a completely different way of doing a problem in their head than you do? It's not right or wrong, it's just different ways of seeing the same problem. This is what locus definition is all about. It's just an idea that for some people they see problems differently. So this is what locus definition of a line means to some people. It means that, let's say that there's a point A and a point B. And there's a line that goes between them. Oh man, that's not perfect, I wish it was. What they see is that if you measure from point A to point B, pretend those are even. That's another way of imagining it. Let's say that we draw, there's another point way out here. And 
and there's another point right here. The point that they would make is that the line is a collection of places where the distance between the two points is the same. Okay, so they're saying start with A and B and draw a line the same length in the same general direction, right? You can't have them skewing out. But toward each other, all of these points will connect and make up a line that are equidistant. The, the line will be equidistant from both of the sets of points. Oh man, a line is the location. I'm gonna write this out just so you can bend your mind around it. Whenever you see the word locus, just substitute in location. A line is the location of all points on a plane. I'm not gonna write on a plane. that are equidistant from two specified points. I'll tell you what that means. I've been trying to tell you what it means. I'll try again. What they're trying to say is that this line is made up of many points, any one of which is the same distance from A as it is to B. Okay, there's another example. Okay, any point on this line, you draw, draw on the point and then draw the lines to A and B and those lines will be the same length. That's what those little marks are supposed to mean. That's a weird way of looking at a line, but okay, we can deal with it. We'll sort of get used to it. And I'll show you how we can use that idea to solve some problems using the distance formula. Example 37.2. It says, find the equation of the line that is equidistant from the points 0, negative 4, and 5, 2. Oh no, I'm doing That's the third problem. Let me just go back and do the second problem. It doesn't really matter, but we'll just do them in order. Okay, it's the same instructions, but I'll read it again. Find the equation of the line. Okay, that's y equals mx plus b, so that's what we're looking for. Find the equation of the line that is equidistant from the points that and that. Write the equation in slope-intercept form. Okay, this is slope-intercept, so we wanna write it like that. Okay, so let's just graph it. You don't have to graph these normally, but I want you to understand what we're doing. Here are two points, four, one, two, three, four, and two. So this is four, two, and then minus two, minus three would be about here, right? Minus two, minus three. That's not the, that's not the line. We want a line that is equidistant from those two points, right? Because we're these crazy locust people. I always think of John the Baptist. You know how he wore, uh, he ate locusts and he wore the camel hair shirt? <laughs> locust sounds like locust to me. So I always think of John the Baptist. Um, they're very holy problems. All right, so here's what we've got. These points do not lie on our line. They are like the reference points for our line. So what we're saying is we're gonna pick any point on this line and we're gonna call it x, y. I'm just gonna pick it over here just to be contrary. This is gonna be x, y. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the distance from here to here, and we're going to measure the distance from here to here, and we're going to say that those should be the same. Hmm. 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 All right. Well, let's get our distance formula handy, uh, and I'll show you what I mean by this. 
the distance equals the square root of y2 minus my1 squared plus x2 minus x1 squared. All right, so let's start with this point. We're going to call that x1, x2, and then we'll call this one, oh, I'm sorry, I did that wrong. That's what, x1. This will be x2, y2. All right, that's going to be on one side. So here it comes. This will be, now we're using this setup, y2 minus two plus squared plus x2 minus four squared. Does that make sense? That gives us, that's the equation or the expression that gives us this distance. That should be equal to, because of this crazy locus definition idea, that should be equal to this blue line distance. Now I'm gonna call this one x1, y1, and this one will still be x2, y2, but I'm writing it in blue just so that I can keep track of everything. So now this becomes y, I don't need the subscripts on here, and in fact, those are unhelpful. I don't need them. So I'm taking those off there. So it will be y, now it's, the formula says minus, so I'm actually gonna add three, right? plus x, and the formula is minus, so I add two. All right, so this is the point on the line. I could put it anywhere, it doesn't matter. I just chose it over here so I'd have room to write. And the idea is that the distance from one point to that point should be equal to the distance from that point to the other point. All right, so that's how we figured that much out. That's how we set the problem up. Now what we're going to do is simplify it. It gets a little crazy, but it's not super tricky. What we're going to do, I'm gonna go back to working it in green just so you can see it all come together, but I want you to understand that this is the distance equation between those two points. This is the distance equation between these two points. Since they're, these points are supposed to be equidistant from this mysterious line, we know that these two distances should be equal to each other. Okay, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna square both sides to get rid of these beastly pig houses. I don't want them. So now we have quantity y minus two squared plus, plus quantity x minus four four squared equals quantity y plus three squared plus quantity x plus two squared. Okay, I hope I said that right. Um, I have a notorious problem for mixing up my x's and y's in these problems, so you'll have to watch me carefully. All right, now what we have to do is pray. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we have to expand these powers of sums into trinomials right? We could do the dance. We could write them out and do the dance. But at this point, I'm guessing you can probably do these in your head, and I'll remind you of how they work. Remember that the first term will be that squared, so y squared. The middle term will be these two added together, so that'll be minus 4y. And then the last term will be this multiplied, so that'll be plus 4. Do the same for this one. It'll be plus x squared minus 8 x plus 16. These problems will give you lots of practice of uh, squaring binomials in your head. And now we're over here. We have y squared plus 6x plus 9, and we have x squared plus 4x plus 4. All right. Now we have to combine all the like terms and sim simplify and make everything that's crazy go away. Ay, ay, ay. The good news is, I'm gonna slide it up a little so you can see better. The good news is that 
In all of these problems, the squares are all gonna drop out. So let's do this. Let's subtract y squared from both sides, and let's subtract x squared from both sides. Whoa, that's a line and a half. They all cancel. That will always be the case, so hallelujah. So we're gonna have minus four y plus four, minus eight x minus plus 16, sorry, equals six x plus nine, plus four x plus four. Now, what we wanna do is we want to add like terms, which will just be the single numbers, and then we wanna swim everything this way. So the first thing I'm gonna do is copy this down at the top of the next page. I think that's right. I'm just checking, hang on. Plus 16, six X plus nine, Yeah, and I already caught myself doing it once. See, I wrote X here. No, that's a Y. I do this all the time. You have to smack me around. You can't smack me around, and I know you wouldn't even if you could. But Ys and Xs, I have to be very careful with those. Okay, so Y, X, Y, X. Okay, I like that. Better, right? All right, let's combine the like terms. And then let's subtract everything and bring it this way. We want to do minus 6y and minus 4x. And then these two will give me 20. And these two will give me 13. So then I want to subtract 13. And in the end, all this side will go to 0 and I will have minus 10y minus 12x, and then I'll have 20 minus 13 is plus seven. Right? Then, oh, you know what I should, well, it doesn't matter, but if you wanna save yourself a little trouble, you can have the y on this side, because we're going for this, right? So it makes sense to leave the x and the plain number term over on the right and just bring the y over here. So I'm gonna do that, and in the future I'll remember to do that. So this will be 12x minus seven, right, when I send them back over. Okay, now all we have to do is isolate our y, because this is what we're going for, right? And then we simply, we, care, we, we carefully simplify. So we get y equals minus six over five x plus seven over 10. And there it is. That's the equation of the line. That is halfway between these two points. What in the world? Okay, we did it. Let's try it again. Fresh page. 37.3. Find the equation of a line that is equidistant from the points 0, negative 4, and 5, 2. We can draw it again if we want, but remember, these points are not on the line. These are the two points that have the line going right between them. I don't know if you guys remember this, but I think it was in the 80s. Maybe the 90s, there was a movie that got talked about a whole lot called a, um, a River Runs Through It. It was, what do I want to say, Robert Redford or somebody? But it was about like fly fishing in Montana. And it was the movie that really put Montana on the map um, in terms of people talking about Montana and thinking Montana was really cool. A bunch of celebrities moved to Montana. Um, and I always think of that when I think of these problems because here's a point and here's a point, right? 
the river runs through it. The line goes between those two points. It's not on those two points. That's what we're used to seeing, is the two points are both on the line. But this is completely different. This is a river runs through it. This is locus definition. John the Baptist, right? I don't know how you keep track of all my metaphors. I can't even. But locus definition means those two points tell us where the river runs through. They're not on the line itself. So we know that we have to set up two distance equations. It helps me to use colors. This is gonna be, and remember we're saying, okay, there's some weird X, Y point, and both of these guys are equidistant. So I'm gonna use my distance formula too. I'm gonna write that down. And I like to always have my plain numbers in the number two spot. It doesn't have to be that way. So I'm gonna always use these as my x2, y2, and then these will be my x1, y1. And remember, I have to do it twice. Whoops, sorry. So this will be in one. This will be in the other. This is technically my orange one. Although this picture doesn't match necessarily to this problem, so I'm just spitballing here. All right, what I'm telling you is you don't have to draw the picture. That is not necessary. So I'm gonna use, this is gonna be crowded, the square root of y minus zero. Oh no, it's y, so it's y plus four, quantity squared, plus x minus zero, quantity squared, equals, now we go to this side, y minus two, quantity squared, plus x minus five, quantity squared. Did I get all my x's and y's in the right place? Yes, I did, be proud of me. All right. So now we're going to square both sides. That's always the first step and it's so satisfying to just wipe out all those pig houses. And then we can, oh, this is, these are twos, okay? Then we can start doing our trinomial squarings, our binomials in our heads, right? So it'll be y squared plus eight x plus 16. Now x minus zero means it's just plus x squared, right? I don't, I don't have a trinomial there. Cool, equals y squared minus four x plus four plus x squared minus 10 x plus 25. That's a squish, isn't it? Now, just like I said before, we can always wipe out all of the squared terms right off the bat. And isn't that so nice? And oh, this is supposed to be a Y. I did it. Oh, and this is supposed to be a Y. See what I mean? That's so bad. Okay, so let's do this. Let's bring the Y over this way. Uh, let me write it again. 8Y plus 16 equals minus 4Y. I'll put the like terms together. Minus 10X plus 29. All right, now in order to get, like I said, in order to get y equals mx plus b, we'll push the y fish to the left and the x and the plain numbers to the right. So I'm gonna subtract the 16 and I'm going to add the 4y. Gone, gone, and I get 12y equals minus 10x plus, what's that, 13, right? And then we divide everything by 12. Reduce fractions where we can, and uh, the equation of the line that goes through here is y equals minus five over six x plus 13 over 12, that doesn't reduce. These creepy fractions, they don't care, we don't care about those because we don't have to graph this, this is just an algebraic solution. And remember that 
this is the line. These points do not lie on the line. These points are the same distance away from this line. It's the river runs through it situation where the points are not on the line, but the points determine the line. I mean, okay, right? Okay, that is called, I'm gonna say it again, locus definition of a line. Now we're gonna switch gears to another calculation that has to do with lines on a graph, but it's easier and it has a different purpose. This is called the midpoint formula, and it's our last topic for this lesson. And it's much easier to deal with. That, that locus of a line thing with the two distance formulas equal to each other, that's a little nutty. Okay, let me dive into the example and show you how it works. This is 37.4. Find the coordinates of the point halfway between minus 2, 6, and 4, minus 10. Okay, again, you don't necessarily have to graph these for your work but it's helpful to talk about them. Okay, minus two, positive six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so here's the first point. This is minus two, six. And then four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so this point is all the way down here. So we imagine that we are drawing a line so not locus formula river runs through it this time this is just a plain old line those are on it but we're trying to, to find the point halfway in between them and there's a really simple way to do it using this midpoint formula we take x2 we add it to x1 and we divide we just take an average of it and then we do the same thing with the y values we just take a simple average, but we call these midpoint formulas. Okay, so as we look at this, we go, uh, our halfway point, I mean, it looks like it's right around there, right? Just eyeballing it on my rough little graph here. So let's see if it works out. Remember, you don't need to do this. You can just go right to the formulas. So we'll call, just like we always do, we'll call the first one the ones of y. I am bound and determined to try to mess myself up today, aren't I? Okay, so to find the new x point, it would be minus 2 plus 4 divided by 2. That becomes 2 over 2. So x equals 1, because this is our x calculation, right? And then for our y calculation, we do the same thing. We just add them together. Um, notice that I'm putting y2 plus y1. That's just because we're used to memorizing formulas where the 2 comes before the 1. But it's plus, so any order is fine. Minus 10 plus 6 divided by 2 equals minus 4. 4 over 2, so y is equal to negative 2. That means that the point halfway between these two points is the point 1, negative 2. And let's look at where that is on our picture. 1, negative 2 would be like right there. Look how close my guess was. All right, so it did exactly what it we hoped it would do. It found the point halfway in between these two. Look how cute and simple those formulas are. Are you not just so happy? And guess what? That is the end of lesson 37. So what I would like to do is give you a revised homework assignment for lesson 37. I want you to do, just a second, I just wanna see where, yes, beautiful. I want you to do problems 
1 through 15, and that's the odds only. As usual. I want to make sure that you get one of these problems in your homework, and that looks like it is problem 7. And then... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to also have you do problem six. Just because problem six looks like a really fun problem. All right, so that's all you need to do for your homework for lesson 37. Half of the assignment plus problem six. And I'll see you next time for 38. Goodbye.